Okay guys, in this video we're going to be taking another look at XRP. There's a couple of interesting articles that we'll go into and then of course we're going to dive into the technical analysis here to see what's going on with our, uh, you know, our XRP kind of thoughts and predictions. Are we looking at XRP continuing this upward trend for a little bit longer? Are we expecting any pullbacks and all that kind of good stuff? And of course talk about what our expectations are for XRP slightly longer term as well. So guys, as we get in, if you do find it useful, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, tap on all, and you won't miss a single video that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. It is free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? Right. Uh, with that said, let's kick things off with this. This is an interesting piece, guys. Um, for all of those people who've been, you know, XRP holders for a while um, and have been kind of waiting for their Spark tokens, everything seems to be, you know, finally set in stone. So basically, uh, Flare unveils the plan to send 100 billion um, Spark tokens to XRP holders in massive airdrop. So um, let's see what's going on here. So Flare Network's much anticipated airdrop to XRP holders appears to be set in stone with a final plan for distribution confirmed. Flare, um, which has planned for months to airdrop Spark tokens um, to XRP holders, is the, for the first time outlining how the distribution will happen. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to what happened previously where they sent a tweet out um, asking for opinions. Do we want just the 15% um, and then burn the rest? Uh, or do we want the 15% plus 3% every single month for um, up to a maximum of 34 months? And that seems to be what's going on here. So and when we take a look at this, uh, once the network goes live, um, Flair says that it each eligible holder will immediately receive 15% of their claimable Spark tokens and then claim on average a 3% per month, carrying on for a minimum of 25 months to a maximum of 34 months. And um, Flair says the slow rollout is designed to try and prevent excessive sell pressure or other negative effects on the Spark token. Um, and here's the quote, right? So it has been our stated position that the best people to provide capital to underpin the trustless issuance of FXRP on Flare are the people who own XRP. The only way to achieve this fairly is, in our opinion, the distribution of Spark that is taking place. Rather than embracing Flare and Spark for the utility it creates, a certain percentage of people will wish to claim Spark only because they believe this is free money and um, to reduce the uh, negative effects of this uh, from this dynamic um, the amount of liquidity that can be put into the market at any one time is therefore limited by the extended unlock process um, flare networks and its native spark token aims to essentially bring smart contract capabilities to various blockchain networks um, create, uh, starting with XRP and then Litecoin. So some really cool stuff going on here. Super excited to get this one. I do think that Flare Networks and the Spark token have significant value in them. Um, and the functionality that you're going to be able to get from their protocol is going to be you know, fantastic. And anyone who's been kind of following the project will know um, that this is something that I've been super excited about for a while and uh, has some serious um, power behind it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one kind of uh, gets airdropped out there. Hopefully, um, you know, there's not going to be a whole host of people just looking to just, you know, dump their tokens straight away. And actually they'll provide some liquidity because the protocol and the white paper for this one were very, very interesting, some unique elements to it that definitely seem to have a lot going uh, moving further forward. So definitely one to kind of be aware of and check out what's going on there. Now, the second piece that I kind of want to bring up and talk about here is SBI and they're showing um, continued support for Ripple. And they also back the XRP ledger for NFTs. Okay, I won't go into super, uh, too much detail on this one, but uh, basically we'll keep it quite light. Um, but SBA um, says the XRP ledger can tokenize XRP um, and other assets. Um, so in the document, SBI said that the XRP uh, or Ripple XRP ledger network is suitable for non-fungible tokens or NFT space. And the report added that the XRP ledger is also fit for other assets. And, um, you know, there's lots kind of going on with this, but the idea of this is something that David Swartz kind of put out there saying, you know, how would you feel about, you know, potentially tokenizing uh, on the XRPL and on all that kind of stuff. I think it's been very well received. And I do think this is something that we could see happening in the space that would, you know, actually drive uh, a, a whole new use case for the XRPL. So this will be absolutely fantastic. And SBI are again back in it. And again, SBI, they generally, um, you know, have been buying up a lot of the competition around Ripple as well. Obviously, are invested in Ripple as well. So again, 
uh, huge supporters um, of everything XRP and obviously XRPL along with Ripple. So um, it doesn't really surprise me that they were very pro the NFTs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so again, this is a, an interesting article. So I'll try to link this in the description so you can obviously have a read of this one as well if you want to get into a little bit more uh, of the granular detail. But um, yeah, I just found it's interesting. Thought you guys might also appreciate what's going on here. So let's talk a little bit now about the price action of XRP and what we're likely to see going further forward. Um, with this particular um, cryptocurrency, right? So here we have XRP to the USDT on the daily chart. We are using, of course, Binance as the data source for this one, as we usually do. Now, obviously, we have this uh, support line, right, that was actually flipped and turned into resistance. So um, what we saw here, this is an upper kind of resistance band just over here on this daily chart. We obviously came here, um, find the resistance, had this break up the event, right, pushed right past. We also found that there was a bit of resistance up this area here, which was previously a bit of support as well as resistance. Um, and that actually came in at, uh, you know, $1.07. And um, but ultimately, we had this kind of breakdown, right? We also found a little few little areas here, breakdown again, below our 75.5 cent area and got a little bit lower. And this was basically just the indication of where Bitcoin actually pulled down to its uh, you know, secondary testing phase, be in my opinion. And um, so what you saw here was basically a mirroring of what mirroring what is what was happening with, with Bitcoin at that point in time. And um, so ultimately what we're looking for is that push to the upside, which is what we kind of seem, have been seeing. We're finding that actually we're resting on a good support level here of 64.8. And that seems to be holding quite well, which was previously an area of resistance that we spoke about previously. Um, and obviously right now is good for support. So on this daily chart that's really super interesting to see that we're finding good support here whilst being really reasonably low on our relative strength index when we take a look at the volume you can see on this daily chart like most things the, the sentiment in the market has been that the price moves up but the volumes go down and on the daily chart that's not sustainable so what we want to do is obviously have a look at that hourly in a moment just to confirm how things are playing out and once we have a look at the hourly see what the short-term look um, views are for xrp what we're going to do is just jump up into our our uh, weekly view and then talk about our expectations with how high I think XRP is likely to go once we kind of get a settlement or um, some kind of closure on the lawsuit. So let's jump down into our hourly. Let's just expand this up a little bit. So straight away, we can obviously see that we have a Fibonacci retracement tool on there. We'll get into that in a moment. But what we're looking for here is obviously that that lower bound that's been here. We obviously come up in finding this uh, area of resistance, turn it into a bit of support in the breakdown recently here in the last few hours before pushing it on up. Now, obviously on this hourly view, what you're getting is ultimately uh, a reasonably high relative strength index just here right so we can see that we are looking for a correction to the downside at some point and what we're looking for is to find this area of support right here again um, but there are some areas that we might actually come down to in a little bit stronger positions we'll have to see if they actually play out um, but there are some interesting levels there as well but for now what we're going to do is throw that volume on right so when we're talking about sentiment in the market we saw the price um, move up um, yet the, the volume decreased. Now you can see that here in this hourly chart right here, we saw the price moving up, but we saw the volume, the, the buying volume decrease, right? Um, and this was pretty much consistent. There was a little bit of a bump here, right? Right here. Um, and then obviously we saw some spike in volume just here at this particular point, And then we started to see a decrease. And again, what you're looking at here on the last three to four hours is a little bit of a push in volume to the upside. But again, the volumes are so small and insignificant at this point, it's not going to help protect us too much. What we want to do is make sure that the volume stays low whilst we actually have a bit of, uh, you know, a few red cans handles to correct our relative strength index. So the idea is that we do eventually actually pull down on the shorter time frames and um, find good support whilst getting this corrected nice and low with low volume so that we can actually start to utilize that relative strength index back to the upside. And what we're looking for is a sentiment shift. And we want to see that sentiment actually be increased buying volume as we increase the price to the upside after we find good support. So nothing is, uh, is lost at this point. Um, but it is definitely going to be something that on the shorter time frames, we're going to kind of get stuck into a bit of a rut for a while where we continue, in my opinion, to kind of trade in a specific direction. Now, what we're going to do is we can just see here very quickly that there is an interesting kind of uh, potential, um, I guess, trend line forming, but not the best. But there is a, a trend line here to the upside. And there is, of course, a trend line to the downside as well, which is uh, relatively strong. We can see that actually being the upper boundary. Now this upper bound here on this downward trend is something that we're likely to potentially continue. Um, and that could continue because we are relatively higher on our RSI. With that being said, we could also see potentially see, um, you know, a, a pull back down to this uh, or up to this area here, this upper bound of about 73.3 in due course as well. 
Uh, but again, we'd expect to first pull down before pulling up. And what I can kind of see here, I'm not sure if this is going to be playing out very well, um, but if we actually take a look at this, it might actually play reasonably well to a point where we might actually start to to see a, an interesting head and shoulder pattern form here. Um, possibly not though it's not the neatest so I'll, I'll leave that off and um, but ultimately there could be an inverse head and shoulders forming and um, we'll have to see if this trend line actually supports uh, a continued uh, decline or whether or not we actually have the break up to the upside if we do and this is an inverse head and shoulders then we should break that neckline uh, which would be approximately here at about 70 cent pushing all the way up uh, towards our 75.5 we'll have to see if that plays out but the expectations would that we would first come up to 70 pull back down and then go on up again. So again, we'll have to see if that does happen and that would be super bullish if it does uh, actually come to fruition. So my expectations are that we eventually will have a bit of a pullback down if this downward trend does continue the way that it has been doing. And then ultimately that's what we'll be looking for there. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I think uh, it will trade sideways for a little bit longer. The volumes are not sufficient enough to actually, you know, take xrp to where it needs to go right now um but that's okay because ultimately as an xrp holder long term is the key here and to dollar cost average better positions where possible so let's get into um you know that weekly chart and this is where things get really interesting right because um ultimately what we're talking about on this weekly chart is the you know the price action that we've seen so far right we obviously have um you know december of 2020 everyone can kind of remember you know where we were going uh, and obviously then getting pulled right down with the lawsuit and uh, courtesy of clayton um and obviously what we saw here was an you know slow and steady push to the upside but this is okay because obviously this correction that we're seeing here just pulls it back down into a nice comfortable area for again purchasing now the key is actually getting this weekly closed candle above this area here that would be fantastic because again we although we've had wicks come down here we haven't actually closed below 64.8 cent on the weekly chart so getting that closed candle um, by sunday above this area is going to be key i hope that is going to be the case uh, it definitely appears to be the case at the moment so if that continues we'll be in a pretty good position that would be a good signal to take us to the next level now and um, from here we can obviously see that our expectations are to eventually come up towards this area here back above 149 getting a closed candle preferably weekly at this point up here takes us to that next price target of uh, two dollars and 87 before the all-time high of three dollars and 84 right now all of that is fine i think that's going to be pretty easy and steady for us to kind of continue to do i think there's going to be you know punches thrown in terms of the sec and ripple a lawsuit uh, and ultimately will be quite volatile on this journey but i think that we'll end up here um, reasonably well and, and once we are out of the lawsuit guys i think we'll be heading up towards this area here um, and again this puts us uh, you know just under 16 dollars at the top end of the extension um, and again you know i'll be personally aiming for around that 13 dollar 50 this has come back the, the 3.618 area of the extension level now obviously this just basically focuses in on um, the all-time high and the all-time low and um, during that particular moment in time this then predicts out where things are likely to go moving further forward now obviously in the best scenario or the best case world right we'd actually be looking at okay well what happens if the banks and everything else kind of goes to plan well at this point you'd actually say okay well we'd lift up um you know our, our fibonacci and actually put our 236 area on top of the previous all-time high this then gives you a kind of a price prediction of about 67 dollars i feel that's the absolute upper bound that's probably the maximum kind of level that you were looking at trying to achieve with xrp and it would be a best case scenario it would not be something that you would see under just kind of regular circumstances it would require let's say cbdc's and um, XRP being used as that bridge asset, being widely adopted, not classed as a security, basically all of your ducks being lined up perfectly. Now, if that happens, I do think that that's likely to happen. Uh, and we'd see, you know, I think if that did happen, that $67 is likely. Um, and again, um, that would just be this cycle. With all those things lined up, I think by 2025, the price of XRP would be significantly higher. With that being said, even if we just lowered our expectations to this point here, and where we saw, you know, just uh, under, I think it was just under $16, so $15.93 would be a pretty good price for XRP considering everything that it's been through this year anyway. And um, so again, I think after the lawsuit, which will, in my opinion, end in settlement, 
then we'll ultimately see these fantastic price discovery for XRP. It will surge past a lot of the all-time, uh, past the first price target of $2.87, past the $3.84, uh, and, and basically progress all the way, all the way up here to these higher price targets for XRP. Um, and guys, hopefully you have found this useful and informative. There's a lot going on on the shorter time frames, and it's always important to make sure that we're aware of not just the short times, um, but also the, the longer term plans as well. Make sure you have a good exit strategy and uh, do not act emotionally in the space. With this said, if you found it useful, do hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you're subscribed. Um, by subscribing, you will be kept up to date with everything. Make sure you tap the bell, hit on the uh, all notifications and you won't miss a single video. With that said, done and out of the way. Hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.